Hello, and welcome to the show Gold Squadron Gays. It's the podcast where two Star Wars loving gays break down each episode of their favorite Star Wars TV shows while also being gay as hell. I'm your host, Bradley Brower. I'm your other host, Charles Rogers, and we're doing something different. Something, <laughs> something new, something exciting, something vintage. Well, not too different because we are looking at a Star Wars TV show. <laughs> sure. Alas, it is not. Uh, the Ewoks or Droids TV show, nor is it the best Star Wars movie of all time, Ewoks 2, The Battle for Endor. Brad, I <laughs> want to tell the people what we are going to be looking at for the next several weeks. Yeah, we're going to be looking at the Clone Wars 2003 version uh, by uh, Jendi Tartakovsky. Tartakovsky? I'm, so, I'm so proud of you. He rehearsed okay. that. I did. Years. He rehearsed that in the pre meeting. You <laughs> had to pronounce. You had to learn how to pronounce Tartakovsky. It was very funny. Yes, uh, he's, it's a it's a hard name to say, but it's if as long as you have the pronunciation up in front of you, it's not that bad. We are trying to get better about the names. We promise. Uh, yeah, we are going to look at the volume one, which is episodes one through twenty, over the next four weeks. Uh, as of recording this, which we are recording several of these episodes simultaneously, we do not yet know when The Bad Batch is premiering. Currently, the next thing that is premiering is going to be Obi-Wan Kenobi on May the 25th, I think is when that is premiering. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going to do the, the first volume, and then we're going to see whether or not we're going to split volume two up or condense it down. That is our plan as of now. Awesome. So, Bradley, do you want to just go ahead and dive straight into this? Because I have a surprising amount of notes for this. Oh, okay. Awesome. So, uh, for those of you who are following along with us at home and you want to watch it on Disney+, Plus, uh, we're watching uh, chapters one through five. Chapters one through five, it's going to get a bit confusing because they did switch chapters four and five around for some reason. Yeah, I noticed that so when I was watching it. If you want to watch along with home... We are going to be talking about from the beginning of the show up until the point where Dirge poses dramatically in front of an exploding uh, ATTE. That is the point we're going to be stopping today, which is technically the end of chapter four, but it's out of order on the thing. So chapter five came first for some reason. So Bradley, what did you think of chapters one through five, our little adventure with the ARC Troopers? Um, so this is a very interesting uh, show, <laughs> it just in general, first of all. Um, I don't know if anybody out there is a fan for of context, the show. For context, I, I forgot to mention this at the top. I watched this growing up. Bradley has never seen it, which is why we're asking him what he thought. Sorry, go right. ahead, Bradley. A little show called. Uh, if if you're if you're a fan of um, this, uh, you might be a fan of a little show called Samurai Jack. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's just a little never little show it. that happened once on Cartoon Network. Never um, heard of it. Never heard of it at all. Didn't didn't it like uh, run for like twelve seasons? Definitely did not get canceled and brought back twenty years later. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know how many five. seasons it does have. I think it has five. Five? Okay. I think it's, I, it's four main ones and then the fifth, the fifth final one is the new that they did. Got it. I guess that's like a trend now is like going back and like bringing back an old show and just doing one more season. Oh my God. I will promise I will watch He-Man Revelations or whatever the fuck it's called. <laughs> but look, I just discovered Castlevania, right? I'm on season three. It's really good. It's just drawing me, and I promise I will get to He Man Bradley. Isn't that promise. the same animation style, or like the same style of art? Like it's a Young Justice style, like that DC comic kind of whatever yeah. it is. Uh, yeah, it's like the I same would say style. so. Yeah, this slightly is, anime, this, slightly not. This Clone Wars is very much in Tartakovsky's style with Samurai Jack, though. Oh, for sure. And when I was watching it, I, I honestly, the funny thing about this is, I was like, the episodes were too short. Like, I was yeah. like, why are these so short? I need more so, stuff. I can tell you why they're so short. Because, dear listeners, uh, I am old enough to be considered 
ancient in the gay world, uh, but not quite old enough to be able to afford to be a sugar daddy. Uh, so I actually remember this as it was airing when like we didn't really have YouTube at the time. So like my brother and I would actually, we had a VCR tape and we recorded this and we recorded each episode in order as they aired. So at the end, we actually had a VCR tape to watch all of these in order. But the reason it's only like two, three minutes long, this didn't get its own dedicated time slot. This actually aired after another show. So in the interim break, normally where commercials would go in between another show and this show, or the, the next show, this aired. So you had to watch the show that preceded it. And then when the credits came on, you had to real fast hit the record button if you wanted to record it. And yeah, it was super fast. It was just tacked on to the end. What so shows was it tacked on to? Oh, I don't remember. Oh, I don't okay. remember. This came out in 2003. This was, oh my God. Oh no. Oh, I can't believe I'm about to say this. This was 19 years ago. Oh God, I remember this. So we're pretty much doing this on the 19th, the 20th anniversary almost of this show. I am it's having kind of an existential crisis. <laughs> I, ah! It's so funny. I, yeah, I've never seen this and I probably would have loved this because I would have been in like third grade. Yeah, you would, you would have been right in the target age demo. Yeah. I was just sort of leaving it. So I was, this was 2003, I would have been 12. Yeah, I, I would have been in the Target demo for this as well. Mm. We both would have been comfortably there. All right. Do you have any additional thoughts on it, Bradley, before we dive into some of my notes? Um, other than that, I, I love the animation style because, again, it's just like the Samurai Jack style. I thought it was really fun. Like, it's like very exaggerated um, versions of these characters, which that we all know what they look like. So it's interesting to see it in this style. Um, I really love all the different things, uh, that they do. I feel like this is definitely a precursor to what, you know, the actual Clone Wars show became, uh, in the new 3D animation when that was all the rage, when that came out. It's, it's interesting to see like the origins of that show in this show. Like I can see where they were kind of thinking about stuff and then it's like, huh, we just took a few things from this and then we brought it over to the real one. So. Yeah, so this was developed as part of the Clone Wars multimedia project. Uh, basically, after episode two came out, Lucasfilm really knuckled down and went, we need some goddamn continuity. Got it. Uh, previously, they'd sort of been throwing caution to the wind when it came to continuity. They were just kind of doing whatever. Um, and around 1999, they really started to knuckle down because they did the New Jedi Order. And they did some other stuff that was sort of drawing from other things. Clone Wars, they really knuckled down and went with a purpose to say, no, the books and the comics and the TV show are going to tie into each other and they're going to tie into the films. Mm -hmm. We will note some interesting places where they hadn't developed some of the stuff for episode three yet. And you can see it here. But like a lot of the characters in this, Dirge, uh, Asajj Ventress, obviously. Uh, these characters would show up again in books and comics, uh, especially especially Asajj Ventress. They loved Asajj Ventress for obvious reasons. Right. Literally, my first note is, oh God, the nostalgia. <laughs> because I heard the marching Clone Wars feet and I went, oh my God, I am 12 years old watching this on the TV absolutely blew my mind I'm just like oh my god so yoda has little ear holes and this is topical because recently uh there's a, an account on twitter that's star wars shot by shot that's been doing every shot from the films okay. in order and pablo hidalgo has been using it as jumping off points to do fun facts and he talked about how yoda originally in the phantom menace funeral scene yoda has his hood up and it looked really weird with the ears so clone wars when they were developing clone wars they just cut holes in the the hood 
Right. So his ears could stick to out. solve that problem. So his ears <laughs> wouldn't make it like pointy. Right. Uh, I found it interesting that we're looking at the episode two designs for the Jedi starfighters. Hmm. Because they're not really used to seeing those. We're used to thinking of the Jedi Starfighters as the Episode 3 fighters. Those hadn't been designed yet, so we're getting the Episode 2 ones. Oh, the um, little triangle pointy... The little triangle things. Yeah. Yeah. When you think Jedi Starfighter, what do you think of? Uh, The first thing I think of is Obi-Wan Kenobi in the red and white Starfighter thing. Like, that's all. I don't know why. In the the ring around See, I think of the ones from uh, from Revenge of the Sith because I've seen that movie way more. Oh, see, so I, I think like, Attack of the Clones oh. is always my favorite, so that's probably why I connected with that one. Oh, that's why I hate you so fucking much. <laughs> uh, one one day we will do specials on the movies and we will talk about my complicated feelings on Attack of the Clones. I love... Uh, <laughs> so Dooku makes a deal with the Quarren, like he shakes their hand and then he turns around and stands dramatically on the cliff posing to no one <laughs> as the waves left this is the first of several times i will know that someone poses dramatically for no reason i love that he, he you know what he's just such a good um mustache twirling you know villain in at least in this because it's just hilarious that he uh he is anyway but he in is this, in, in this in particular i thought like because he's such a dramatized version of dooku like <laughs> it's great oh yeah i this dooku was more in line with the legends dooku which is the sort of menacing presence um mm. we didn't obviously have revenge of the sith yet so we didn't know what was going to happen to him this one I find it interesting to contrast with, I almost want to say the the 2008 Clone Wars series had a little more of a nuanced version of Dooku. This one, he's just kind of there and being the villain. Right. I honestly, I can't remember if he's in episodes 21 through 25 that much. But here he's mainly just here to like set the Asajj Ventress plot in motion. Mm. Yeah, because I I have I've at this point, audience, uh, I've only watched the first. If you're watching on Disney Plus with us, it, I've only watched the first quote movie on there. So they have it split up into two movies. You have an hour long one that's chapters one through twenty, then you have another hour long one that's twenty one through twenty five. So it's I haven't watched the second half yet because I'm trying to wait a little bit before we watch that. So I have here in my notes. Oh no, Anakin. Uh, in response to him, like, um, moving the lightsaber so it ominously looms against his face. We'll get to it in episode four of this, mm-hmm. uh, the the final one of volume one. Uh, why I specifically have this noted, but I wanted to bring it up. <laughs> so everything is stylized, including the voices. So when we get this scene in the chancellor's office, Palpatine's, like, so obviously evil. <laughs> like he's sitting there like clicking his fingers together even like, his yeah, yeah just his design is like like he's got these skinny ass like fingers that are like obviously evil shaped like i don't know if you you know they reminded me of um hades from uh the hercules the disney movie it's like the same yes. exact design like it's that like weird it's supposed to look bony like i guess that's their version of bony and it's like it's yeah hilarious. it's like clicking his fingers yeah I am skillfully manipulating this 30 second conversation right we don't have time to get into the intricacies have I signaled that I'm evil yet <laughs> although speaking of people being evil Obi-Wan is a dick in this um yeah he when they're having the conversation in the the port or the starport or where, wherever it is where Anakin's working on a ship I was like why is he such an asshole dad like <laughs> he's such an asshole in this and it's, i guess they were going mean. off they were going off episode two where yeah. he's kind of a dick to anakin in episode two yeah. and then we get to episode three and they're friends but like what the hell obi-wan like he's literally like oh i don't think anakin can handle this mission in front of the fucking chancellor and the grandmaster of the order <laughs> 
the hell? Such a jerk. What the hell? I love how they look at each other, though. Like, how they stare at each other. They're, like, pissed off that Palpatine's <laughs> like, oh, he can do it. It's great. And then they look at each other like, this is side eye. And, mm-hmm. and this, Yoda and him have this weird, like, they have these this great, like, expressions. The expressions in this are wonderful. Particularly Yoda. Yoda's so well drawn yeah. in this. Like, so well animated. Speaking of things that are well animated... <laughs> I'm going to read my note out verbatim. Everyone is so fucking dramatic in this. Oh, yeah. In response to Anakin walks up to the starfighter. Does he take his cloak off? No. Does he dramatically, like, flip his cloak off and hand it to someone? No. This motherfucker, like, arms spread out, just throws his cloak off. And it blasts through the wind and lands on C-3PO. And I'm like... (laughs) <laughs> seriously it's kind of funny too i do like the touch of c3po is in the dirty armor is what i like to call it yeah i had that noted later uh that he's in the silver armor and not yeah, yeah. the gold plate yeah right because it hasn't yeah i guess if you're following along in the movies in attack of the clones he was he had his first kind of set of cheap armor or why well, i like to call it dirty armor because it's like it's almost like bronzy or like there's parts of it that are rusted and it's not really like a nice shiny coat yet yeah i definitely took a note of that because i found it super interesting it's especially like prevalent in some later episodes some later chapters where he shows up (laughs) they are really pushing this anakin and padme thing in this with the dramatic across the stars swell and they put the hand on them like (laughs) you guys can't see it because we don't release these recordings but bradley did just like the hand thing that they do in this on the screen it was hilarious puts her hand on the Uh, glass like don't go yeah i was we'll get to it when we get to it i was expecting to be disappointed with padme in this and i was not uh i really liked what they did with her in volume one but (laughs) again they did not have episode three so they were playing up this star-crossed romance thing uh one final note on chapter one uh is if you listen very closely to where the music swells you can actually hear it go into the da 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 that they would do for the credits uh, okay i did notice that in the first episode like it like it yeah cut real, right before it was supposed to do it that's where the credits would have gone mm. in episode one got it Yeah, I noticed that if you ever want to keep track of the chapters, like they always do a wipe to indicate the next chapter. I just did air quotes. I don't know why I do that when I talk. Like I just put emphasis when I'm doing air quotes, but I don't actually like say quote. Like I just, I just say it. I I assure (laughs) you that you can hear it on the recording. Okay, good. As long as I'm putting emphasis in my quote that I'm saying. Yeah, you're putting emphasis. All right. This was fucking awesome to watch at 12 years old. This blew my little 12-year-old mind. Yeah, I noticed that they do a lot of, um, I guess, old animation, like, tricks where it's, like, the copy and paste. Like, so I noticed oh, that yeah. there's, like, a lot of one thing just to give it volume. And it's just interesting that there's, like, hundreds of, like, that one thing. Well, that lends an immense scale to it that yeah. really isn't present in early seasons of The Clone Wars because they were doing the experimental hmm kind of stuff this one you get a sense that there are these huge battles happening right with hundreds if not thousands of troops on the field and you do get a sense of that whereas you don't really get that same sense in early clone wars i only have two notes for the arc trooper section the first is i i want to talk about the portrayal of the clones here because the clones are very cool in this what they are not is humanized in any way. Mm. Yeah, no. I think that's what puts the 2008 series above this one for me. Yeah, you don't notice is, them or care about them. Yeah, you don't see a single clone trooper face in volume one of this. I checked. Including points where their helmets come off, you don't see their faces. They literally are just faceless. And I feel like the 2008 series gave them that face back. And I think that was sort of cool. Like, this is awesome. Oh, no. Yeah, this whole thing is really cool. But I, I see what you mean. But I don't, I don't care about any of these people. I do all. like the color design ones. Like, so I like the ones that are colored. Like, so the, either the commander or, like, the 
you know, whatever their specialties are, like the special ones. I like the blue. I like the red. I think they're very dynamic design wise. I mean, I know that's what they already looked like in the movies, but for some reason, when you put it in this cartoon form, they stand out like 10 times more. And oh, yeah. it's so vibrant. So I just really like yeah, the design. Very there. vibrant. There's no difference between the droids and the clones in this. Yeah. And, and that's kind of a problem. Although I will say it is extremely, extremely funny to me when they get on top of the, the gun. They don't climb the gun for any, the tower for any particular reason. <laughs> they don't get evac out of there. They meet them in the city later on. Yeah. Do you know why they climb up the tower, Bradley? Because the animation can. <laughs> It's to pose dramatically in the way. <laughs> I figure. <okay. laughs> Everyone in the show is so fucking dramatic. Oh, can we talk about the city for a second? Yes, we can absolutely talk about the city for a second. Okay, the banking clan city. I was going to talk about more when it's like more important later on when they actually, I think they mentioned it by name a little bit later, but um, in, a, in chapter four, I want to say, or five, even though they're out of order, but they, it's like, it's called the banking clan. Right. This is the, we finally see, I guess, the banking clan city slash planet. Yes. And it's this is all the banking. old Washington, D.C. monuments. Like <laughs> every, it looks every like city, bank city. buildings. Yeah. It looks every, like a every bank. single one. It's a very planet of the hats. It's like, oh, your right. thing is banking. Right. Um, so your whole entire planet. All has of to your look stuff. Like <laughs> ancient Rome. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. I just thought it was funny. Like pillars and everything. I just thought it was great. Yeah, it's also super empty. Like, yeah, I, I, I have this noted I, later on that I was like, this collateral damage is insane. Yeah. Like there is buildings blowing up left and right. It looks cool, but the city looks super empty. And it's yeah, like- Yeah, there's no stakes, right? There's no real stakes to it. And I, I guess it's because one, we don't want to animate it. Two, we don't want yeah. to show our good guys blowing stuff up. That's true. Yeah, it looks like they evacuate. Right. I'll just say they evacuated the city and then now they, it's I like, guess they uh, evacuated the city right. or something. Yeah. For some reason, like I mentioned at the top, episodes four and five are swapped. So it should have been the Dirge stuff and then Mon Cala. Gotcha. And yeah, because I thought it was it. weird because my like one of my notes is like, uh, I, I literally talk about the clones and then I cut to like, why does Kit Fisto have to be jacked as fuck? Like, so it, it's like weird that it's out of order like that. But Yeah, let's address that for a second. Uh, <laughs> Kit Fisto is jacked as fuck. I knew we were going to talk about this section for a little bit longer than normal. <laughs> oh, but, oh, I, oh, oh, you knew it was coming. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tartakovsky, uh, <laughs> for this as a 12-year-old closeted in denial uh gay kid uh this was a learning experience for me <laughs> he's unnecessarily hot in this uh, i he's also unnecessarily like homosexual too because he literally like throws off his jedi robe oh, and yeah. he's like exposing his abs and then he's like i'm gonna do an olympic dive now into the ocean like from a starship like <laughs> This uh, series is gay culture because it's so fucking dramatic uh, all that. the time for no reason. None whatsoever. We see here the political divide between the corn and the Montella that's eventually, when it's adapted into the Clone Wars, they give it a lot more nuance. Right. Here, they don't really have time to do that. So it's uh, the Montella are the good guys and corn are bad. Uh, here you go. Let's do undersea fight now. Right. Uh, which, you know, is cool. Uh, I love that Kit Fisto's lightsaber is actually boiling the water around it. Mm -hmm. Great detail. A detail that was supposed to be in the Clone Wars show, the 2008 show, uh, but they couldn't afford to animate it for every single time the lightsabers were underwater. I think they couldn't afford to animate it. I remember them not being able to do it, but I could be wrong about that. It's been a while since I've actually watched those episodes. Well, I did enjoy the underwater battle itself. I thought it was really cool because one, we get underwater lightsabers, so that's kind of fucking cool. Like it's like that is awesome. Think, you don't expect to think it's about that. Boiling the water around it is how yeah. it's working. Mm -hmm. And like 
We also know from deleted scenes in episode one that it like short circuits out Obi-Wan Kenobi's, or no, it's not deleted scenes. It's in the movie. Yeah. That his lightsaber gets like shorted out for a minute. Uh, I also love anytime it goes up to the surface and it's getting like blasted from the cannon from underneath. Mm -hmm. I love the use of depth in the choreography of this battle because the cannon shooting them up from underneath. Right. And I love that it doesn't feel like a linear plane. Like there's the stuff up on the surface and then down below and they're affecting each other, which is kind of neat. A component you don't see to a lot of Star Wars battles, especially space battles, and you really should, is the element of depth. Into episode uh, five, which should be episode four. These banking clan assholes are here. Yes, I like the, I like those character designs because I thought they were accurate at least to the the movie or like what we saw they're kind of tall and creepy yes. and, lanky and it's good we got the f- appearance of a gentleman named dirge dirge okay. holds a very special place in my heart but yeah, you sound like you have him. something you want to say okay because i was like this is this is uh, now this is my first time watching um and obviously he's not in revenge of the sith um and so i was like who is this Lancelot looking motherfucker like on a speeder bike with a, what, he literally has like a lance, like, or something. He literally like, has like a lance. Like, you and like a, a suit of armor. Bike. Like, it's very much mm-hmm. like this, which also, uh, they are like lance, what is it? Is it called lance fighting? What is it called? Uh, <laughs> where you, where you jousting. That? Jousting. It's called yeah, jousting. They, I was like, they have a jousting battle with this character they, do. they like, have a fucking jousting battle but that's in the next episode oh oh that's right, that's right. Well, they okay, sorry. Jousting battle. They, just, they just introduced the the jousting robots we'll call they're them they're running droids. around and just like stabbing them up through things yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh it's just, it's just a weird design i love it um it makes no sense uh from a like literal standpoint like that these droids would be like jousting and then like <laughs> somehow it's, blowing up all these things it doesn't make any sense it's very star wars i it's love it very it's star wars does it make sense no is it awesome yes but i do want to talk about, him, about i do want to talk about dirge so dirge had a little yeah. bit of a bigger role in legends however as of war of the bounty hunters the recent comics crossover event mm-hmm. dirge is canon actually what they dirge brought him back appears, they brought him back he hunts down Dr. Afra and another character, I won't say, uh, because okay. spoilers, but he does hunt these characters down and has a little brief interaction with them hmm. and survives it. So, so maybe he, he might show canon. up later. And he is canon and running around as of a post-Empire Strikes Back pre-Return of the Jedi. Interesting. In Legends... Uh, he showed up a few other times in comics. I don't think he showed up in any books. He was much grittier in the comics. And of course, the Dark Horse comics tended much like grittier and darker. And mm. I have opinions about that. We'll get to them later. Um, but what, the reason Dirge holds a special plate in my heart is I have, a, I have the toy of this. Mm. I still have it. It was part of a line that they did of, of the Clone Wars toys. I have Dirge, and he comes with the lance. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. That's his weapon. So, fun fact about me. I still have this toy, and also a Saj Ventress, and also Anakin Skywalker. Huh. They're in boxes somewhere. When these episodes come out, I might try to dig them out and post them on Twitter and Instagram or something. There you go. Uh, before we get into final thoughts on the first five, Bradley, I want to tell you about two of our voice actors. Yes. I've split the voice actors up. So the voice actors, we're, we're going to talk about them sort of as they become relevant. Uh, I want to talk about our voice actors for Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Okay. Anakin Skywalker is being voiced by a gentleman named Matt Lucas. And Matt Lucas is thing is playing anakin skywalker okay (laughs) if you look at his credits that's all he does i am pulling up uh his thing is voicing anakin skywalker in video games so he has been in one two three four five six seven eight nine ten video games oh my god as anakin skywalker between 2002 and 2015 
Also, he's been in a lot of Wake's Club for some reason. You had a note about uh, Anakin Skywalker's voice. So, if if you're if you're on the talk, if you're on the TikTok, um, and you know anything about anything right now, um, the current trend or the current uh, thing that everybody's making fun of right now is the new uh pinocchio animated movie oh no and i swear to you in the one episode where obi-wan's like hey you can't go out there and he's he's fixing his uh his starship and he's like they have to let me go out he's like i literally in my brain i was thinking like father i need to go out on my own like i need to see the world or whatever it is i have the whole world to see like that's literally what I heard in my brain. Now every time Anakin talks in this show, all I can think of is Pinocchio. Master, when can I go out on my own? Yeah. I have the whole galaxy to see. Oh my god, <laughs> that's all I can think of. Oh my god, you're so right. I hate that you're right, but you're I so know. right. That's all I thought. I just thought you would think that was funny, but that's what I thought. Yeah, this is Matt Lucas's thing. Apparently, is he does. Um, he does Anakin Skywalker when Matt Lanter is not available to do it. Got it. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, is voiced by a gentleman that I had never heard of before named James Arnold Taylor, who, according to his credits, uh, wasn't in that much. Um, mm. He was in a little little show in 2008 called Star Wars The Clone Wars, voicing a character called uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. I don't know. I've never heard of this show. <laughs> I was like, are you faking me out right now? I was like, what is going on? <laughs> I was so confused for a second. I was like, wait. That yes. make it. I was like, okay. this, is, this is James Arnold Taylor uh, voicing Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, he would later go on to be the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi in Star Wars The Clone Wars, the 2008 show. I believe this, this is his first time voicing Obi-Wan Kenobi. But he's been in... He's, if, if you know a Cartoon Network show, he's been in that show. Got it. Okay. So he's, yeah, so he's, he did a lot of stuff lot. for Cartoon right. Network. Cool. Those are the two actors that I wanted to bring up this time. Bradley, do you have any final thoughts on episodes... Uh, chapters one through five one everything through five. up to dirge posing dramatically in front of the atte um yeah no so i think uh, other than the kit fisto episode or chapter um it all flowed really well together i almost kind of feel like the kit fisto episode should have went after the first episode because they show us dooku talking with the mon calamari and you know all that well, he talks with the quorum or, or the quorum i'm sorry um, so it kind of made more sense to kind of put it maybe a little sooner because the rest of it all kind of feels like one big episode um, that ends with Dirge, you know, kind of attacking the troops that are invading the banking clan. So I thought that right. was like a nice, like cohesive section. As it originally aired, that was a cliffhanger. I see why they moved it. They wanted to move it to kind of a down moment so they could keep up the intensity. But in the original airing order, Dirge shows up and is bad and is destroying the ATTEs. And then mm. we spend a week with Kit Fisto. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, and then we go to, uh, I'm double checking here. Uh, yeah. Then we go into straight into uh, the red attack stuff. Uh, and we don't come back to Obi-Wan until episode eight. Ooh, so a little bit of a cliffhanger here. We're not going to know what's going to happen to Obi Wan Kenobi so we, for another week and a half. So at the well, <laughs> at the time, at the time, we didn't know till three weeks later. Or, yeah, three weeks later. I am I am wrong. We are going to huh. do a live thing. Charles fucked up. Oh, because this aired. This aired daily. Oh. I am just now realizing that this aired every day. Uh, it started airing on November seventh. And then it aired the 10th through the 14th, 2003. And then the 17th through the 20th. So it aired every day for about two weeks. So we had to wait a whole four days to find out what happened. Interesting. Well, you listeners are going to have to wait possibly, well, 
four days or possibly two weeks, depending on this release schedule that we do these episodes <laughs> in. So. You listeners will have to wait until our next episode. So without further ado, uh, Bradley, go ahead and run the socials so that our audience can wait for a period of time and we can wait for exactly the amount of time it takes us to set up another episode. Thank you for listening to Gold Squadron Gaze. Did Charles fuck something up? Email us at goldsquadrongaze at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Gold Squad Gaze. And you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Gold Squadron Gaze. Subscribe to us on YouTube at Gold Squadron Gaze, where we post this podcast as well as exclusive video content. Please join us next week and every week for another episode of Gold Squadron Gaze.